Mm-hmm. That Supervisor Flynn has. Okay. Are there any other requested changes to the agenda from our board here? Is there a motion to accept the agenda as revised? So moved. Motion. Good. And a second. Seeing no objections, then um, our agenda stands as revised. And we'll now go to consent agenda items 10 through 27. And the sentences I see added on um, item 22 from Supervisor Flynn is efforts are underway to secure more grants for the subject project. All grant funds received by the county in calendar year 2007 will reduce the amount of SRF loan for phase five. And does staff have uh, any issues with the sentence being added? Thank you for being here, Mr. Patala. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Ready Patala with Public Works Agency. Uh, Supervisor Flynn called me on uh, Thursday, and based on my discussions with him, I added that language myself and sent it to you. And uh, so then you board. support it. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Supervisor Foy. Does when you say all grants funds received by the county in calendar year 2000 will reduce this, do we have to be specific? I don't want somebody to say that, well, that was a grant and we're going to use the money. I mean, I know it has to be specific for this project, right? Yes. What, is all, what does all mean? That's my thing. I want <laughs> well, to, that's, that's, I'm, yeah, I'm careful about, about Well, uh, my intent of all was any grants received for the LRIO project would be used to reduce the loan. For phase five. Could we just put for El Rio? I mean, that. Yeah, we could if you want to. I mean, does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Uh, maybe we just add that El Rio. Do we have to? All projects pursued for El Rio project. So it's going to read um, all grant funds received by the county for El Rio? Yes. Okay. So with that additional change. Uh, we, I, I, I guess yes, I just. Supervisor Bennett. I guess I just want to. I mean, it just number one. I don't know how that. Should, I, I I think we all know what's going to happen. This staff report's going to come out sometime here and stuff. So I'd like to see that you know this change. But well, they I mean the efforts are underway to secure more grant funds. I mean, this this is a, a real clean, straightforward thing. You know, we're asking for this grant. And we hope we get it. Right? Um, so we want to we want to be able to get this grant. Um, you know, if, if, let me give you an example. You know, all grants funds received for El Rio. What if we get a El Rio fund for something else? I mean, I don't think it's very likely in 2007. You know that that would happen. You know, going to be dedicated to this. I mean, so how about all grant funds received in calendar year? You know, uh, you know, you know, <laughs> for you know for the for the sewer project, we'll, re, we'll so reduce this. Rio sewer project. Oh, okay. I just heard El Rio. Okay. Yeah, it does? So for the El Rio sewer project. There we go. El Rio sewer okay, project. great. Yeah, right. As long as it's specific, I think we're okay. Yeah. yeah. For right. El Rio no. sewer project. For the El Rio sewer project. There right. you go. All grant funds received by the county for the El Rio sewer project in calendar year 2007 will reduce the amount, blah, blah, blah. All right. Okay. Great. And so you'll, re okay? you'll redo this, this, this letter this language right? yes will, I will. will be changed so that how does that get reflected in the official record will Roberta have that as the official it will be part of the minutes as well as we'll ask mr. Pacala to revise Great. the actual okay. page the thank you thank you agenda with the revised language on item 22 as added by the board yes okay. Uh, did you have another I just comment? I just had a comment on number 13 mm -hmm. where they talk about um, I just I guess get concerned we're, we're, we're going to add um, the urology services and we're going to hope that we get enough revenue to offset this increase in cost I'm not I don't want to well, 
let's just move with the consent, but I just wanted to make a comment on that. It just goes back to that thing we're, we're hoping without any guarantees that we're spending money without any guarantees of revenue. Yet, so. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion, I believe, from Supervisor Long on the consent agenda. Supervisor Bennett, did you second that? If that's a request, I certainly will. Well, it's not a request. Yeah, Does, did, no, was no, there no, a no, second? No. Supervisor Foy really seconds just, it. really just looking at one other item. Is, uh, did you want to call another one out for comment? Uh, just, just give me sure. 10 seconds. Uh, no, yeah, I'll second that. Okay, okay, we have a second and a third then. Uh, see no objections on the consent agenda. That passes, and that's items 10 through 27. And now we have an 845 time certain item, and that is the County Executive Office recognition of county employees, participants, and medalists in the 2007 Corporate Games. <laughs> Good morning, Ms. Madam. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Christy Madden with the County Executive Office. I'd like to invite this small army of people who represent a small fraction of those who participated in this year's corporate games to come forward. Come on, you guys, get down here. Don't, and we have people up on the dais who participated in the corporate games, and the clerk of the board participated in the corporate games. So we had uh, quite a few people. As you may know, this is our fifth year participating in the corporate games. Um, this time for the first year, the county participated as one team. We joined forces with uh, probation and the district attorney's office. Um, and consequently, we had over 500 individuals register to participate in the corporate games this year for the county. I think uh, last year it was about 300 without probation and NDA. Um, we are closing the gap with Amgen, our nemesis. Um, <laughs> Last year, we trailed Amgen by about 88 points. This year, we reduced that gap to about 67, and we can certainly do better than that next year. We're getting a little bit smarter with each passing year of how we form our teams and how we stack the deck. Um, there were uh, a total of about 140 medals handed out in this year's corporate games. We got uh, 47 golds, 40 silvers, and about 53 bronze medals. Um, this, of course, couldn't happen without the tireless efforts of our event coordinators. There were, uh, there's 25 separate events in the corporate games, and I get a volunteer to handle each of those events. Some of those events had up to eight teams underneath them. So we have team captains who help coordinate the individual team activities. It's a... Uh, no small feat to pull this off every year with all of the volunteers that we have for the county. Um, I'd like to extend my uh, gratitude to Esau Panapa from the probation agency and Mickey Coyle from the DA's office. Uh, Mickey and Esau were instrumental in pulling everyone together as one county team. I had some very nice words of support from the city of Ventura who said that uh, they thought the county was really pulled together as a, as a good team this year, and, and our um, experiment was very successful, and I look forward to our participation again next year. We do have in the audience um, a couple of people I'd like, to, I'd like to highlight to you. We have Gibby here, who was our Triple Crown Gold Medal, medal winner in Horseshoes. And I don't see, I think Julie Stewart, I don't see Julie here. I think Julie won the most medals, individual medals in the games this year. I think she got three. Um, um, I don't know exactly, it was softball, softball, yeah, bowling. Frisbee golf. And Frisbee golf. There you go. Um, uh, we had some new volunteers participate in the corporate games this year. Frank Chow from our office uh, took on the task of coordinating the tennis event. And for the first time ever, the county beat Amgen in the tennis, tennis event. So <laughs> Frank was out there on Saturdays giving private lessons and uh, guilting all of his agencies and departments into participating. <laughs> So it, it was. <laughs> yeah, where's the gate, right? So it was a wonderful event and activity this year, and I understand Linda Parks was out there playing frisbee golf, and participated in the Habitat for Humanity event this year, and uh, 
Mr. Johnston and um, Paul Grossgold were out there with Marty doing um, the miniature golf and Roberta. So it was a great event. So if maybe we can squeeze. <laughs> if we can squeeze people together, if Johnny and Roberta come down and, and Supervisor Parks. Everybody has to squeeze together. you know like now so we're, we're gonna try and get some volunteers we have some events where we actually have people practicing all year long um, and there are summer events and summer leagues going on sponsored by the city so we're gonna get smarter and boy we're gonna catch Amgen all right thank, thank you, you. I have to say what a great idea it was to include Habitat for Humanity this year. We got a, a good group of people from the county out there helping to build a house, and I got an opportunity to go out there with my staff and do some, and wrap a house. I've never wrapped. And I have a Frisbee from the Ultimate Frisbee, or the uh, <laughs> Frisbee Golf, and I tell you, you never um, had the occasion to see four adults standing around throwing rocks at a tree. <laughs> When one of these things gets stuck, that's like the only thing you can do. But uh, it was a wonderful, uh, a wonderful uh, group event. Thank you so much for organizing it. <laughs> and we'll go back to um, the rest of our regular agenda here. We have um, public comments as our next item. And I have one card, and it's Lou Matthews, if you'd like to come forward. I'd like to say that we had a great NAMI walk, too, on the 12th, and Linda, you were there, we saw you, and the department really supported us this year. It was a big crowd. My name is Lou Matthews, and um, I'm a member of NAMI. I'm also a member of the Mental Health Board, but I'm not here speaking in that capacity. I'm speaking uh, as a NAMI member, as a family member, <clears throat> and as a concerned citizen. And I have two, two issues to speak about. And first, I want to speak in support of Turning Point Foundation. Some of you will remember that Turning Point was actually established by our local mental health department back in the mid-'80s. And by that, I mean they recruited and supported the establishment of a local nonprofit um, organization. I personally value Turning Point for two main reasons. They have served the homeless mentally ill, some of them very needy, and I've seen these people myself. Um, and when you do that, your place can sometimes not look as neat and pretty as other places and as some people might wish them to look. Um, and um, it's been criticized about this, and it's been my experience that they have tried to address their criticisms in the past. Um, it's also been my sense that Turning Point has always tried to do what the county expected. Um, and I believe that this was, I think also the county has a responsibility to the foundation to make changes in a way that is helpful but still does the job. And the, the county has the power, not turning point. And so they deserve um, respect and help and consideration as long as they're doing a good job. And, and I think that 
certainly their executive director has tried to do that. The other reason is that Clyde, their executive director, was the first person to put the idea out there that we could build housing with HUD funds. And I remember the day that he said that and a light bulb went off and we have housing because of that. And so he has brought a lot of ideas. He has always been more forward thinking than I have been. Um, he's hired clients when the department has been slow to do that until recently. And when you hire clients, it's risky. And then when programs are taken away for those clients, as has happened in the past, it's turning point that takes the heat for that. And the other issue that I came to speak about is the um, my abstention la yesterday at the mental health board meeting for um, the expansion funds of the Mental Health Services Act program. And I did this because of the crisis house that was eliminated from the original plan. And the reason they gave was that they could not find a place in the community that would accept a crisis residential home. And I know that cities are pushing away the mentally ill. I've had calls just recently about that. And if you put a crisis residential home, home in a community, that's treatment in a community. And so you may run into continuous problems. In fact, the person that was trying to find a place said, we may not be able to find one. But we have the 300 Hillmont building that is soon to be vacated, as I understand it, and it's scheduled to be demolished. This would serve as a crisis house if we have the will to make it happen. The Hillmont uh, Psychiatric Unit still has a high census of administrative days. And we can save money by moving those through. We visited the Hillmont uh, Residential Home, which is a mental health treatment facility, rehab facility, and they were supposed to take people who were on administrative days. But the problem is that's a rehab program, and so many people who are there on administrative days do not fit the criteria for rehab. We need a crisis house. It will save tons of money over time, and it is more humane. I know two people personally, which means there are a lot more out there, but two people personally right now in board and cares that need much more than they are receiving. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. I forgot one thing. It's a, sh it's, it's a shameful waste to take that building down. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we have a request uh, from Judge White to call item 43 at 9 a.m. And I'm wondering if she is here yet. Not yet. So let's go ahead and go to our board comments. And when she comes in, we can um, go ahead and go to item 43. Um, board comments, shall we start with Supervisor Long? <laughs> um, yes, good morning. Thank you. Um, I have a, a list to submit to adjourn in memory of. Um, I'd like to just uh, call out one of the uh, residents in Fillmore in the 3rd District, Marion Rebecca Hadley. And I call her out because she was um, so instrumental and a leader as she, in 1954, co-founded the Association for Retarded Citizens and became its charter president. And she was um, led the way in working and building that organization throughout our county, um, and and it was recognized by Ventura's Businesswoman of the Year uh, for for that work. Um, was named Ventura's Honor Lady uh, by the Ventura Chamber of Commerce in 1976, and just did a tremendous uh, lot of civic work in both Fillmore but also countywide. Um, but certainly the establishment of ARC and the ARC that we know it today came from the great work and heart of, of Mrs. Hadley. So I wanted to call her out specifically. Um, and I, you know, last, uh, other comment just to make about the May Revise um, as we start to hear from our, our agencies on what specific impacts will, um, are important to them. Um, I see some couple of things that jumped right out, certainly that to our Human Services Agency and the CalWORKS program for the um, folks who are on CalWORKS who have, quote, termed out um, that they will no, no longer be eligible for any assistance. Um, and for the adults, that may be tolerable, but for the children, as is proposed in this, um, I don't think that's we should tolerate that. Um, the children 
will, should continue to receive whatever support is needed um, uh, and, until uh, the adults are able to um, obviously get, get back on their feet. But anyway, that's, that's one that concerns me. The other one that should concern all of us in our county is the um, potential of, of removing any funding for the, um, um, the agricultural lands, the LGCs. Is that right? Land, yeah. The, um, I think that that's concerning to our agricultural community because I think it just continues to chip away at uh, um, keeping that community strong, that industry strong in our state, not just our county. So I hope that um, uh, I talked with uh, Ag, our Ag Commissioner Earl McPhail about that piece. Um, there is concern about that. Also concern about the um, uh, DPR's proposed fumigant rules to clean the air. Um, obviously a lot of analysis to be done yet on that, um, but it will be coming to us as a, as a uh, Air Pollution Control District Board um, as, as they work through the logistics of of how to implement um, uh, such a rule. Uh, one of the things that Mr. McPhail said to me was that uh, we, uh, he has been involved with the state discussions on this with um, uh, DPR and ARB and that um, we are already doing some of what is go going to be proposed in the rule and uh, moving to lower the um, uh, use of pesticides in, in the agricultural indus industry in our county. But that's one that we should also be paying close attention to. Um, and other than that, um, this coming weekend and next Monday, of course, is Memorial Day. And I know that we all usually go out to our community and participate in that. I would like to just make the comment to honor our veterans and to recognize the day as a, um, uh, a day of both celebration for those who, who served mm -hmm. our country and recognition for those who gave their lives. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Long. Supervisor Foy? Thank you. Yes, I would like to adjourn a memory of these few people. One I would bring up, which would be Beverly Ewing, We're talking about uh, appreciation for our military this week. And we, too, she was uh, in the military, three Meritus Awards, uh, giving her herself uh, for our country. Um, also, we, and on my own staff, have one of our young women working for us has a brother who's serving in uh, Iraq in a second term now and, and uh, just for the people again who are going to serve and I know we're going to do a, uh, a presentation today so anyway those are the comments I have thank you thank you and Supervisor Bennett thank you just um, will let you know I attended uh, two um, two things for foster children over the weekend um, but the realtors the professional realtors in Ventura County have gotten together to create a new organization called reply real estate professionals uh, for youth um, and um, they had their first uh, fundraiser and I had an opportunity to speak to them and they raised fifteen thousand dollars and just want to publicly thank them and get that out on the and then the other uh, event over the weekend for foster children was uh, the foster families every year we have a day that we bring the foster families in for a whole conference for uh, them and uh, it was a wonderful event and they rolled out their video um, their 20-minute recruitment video and it is outstanding so if um, it's a they've done a great job I mean it it really it does that most important thing which it's hits you at the emotional level so if you have organizations in your communities um, board members um, that could benefit from that video it's probably the best recruitment tool I've seen in the six years I've been here working on this and they just rolled it out it's very nice they're gonna have a whole media thing that is on wheels and makes it easy for the whole thing to be set up and, and that kind of stuff the other thing I'd like to do is um, during board comments is uh, to let everybody know we are, are giving a uh, commendation uh, to Colonel uh, uh, Alex Gorstadter. Uh He was the 57th commander of the Los Angeles District, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And I know Supervisor Long and I have worked closely with him on the Santa Clara project, Supervisor Long and me with the Matilla Dam project. Uh, and um, he uh, has served there uh, June 10th is when he came in and became the commander and his next assignment now is he's going to be the executive director of civil works at the headquarters uh, in Washington which is um, uh, certainly means he'll be 
very much in charge of sort of trying to prioritize all the projects, and it's, it'll be good that he knows and understands Ventura County well as he does that. But he's been a, a great leader, a great person for us to work with here, um, uh, and uh, I think he has a real appreciation for Ventura County, and we're looking forward to sending him off this afternoon in our meeting that Supervisor Long and I'll have. So those two things, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I, my board comments are a little bit longer, and I see that um, Judge White is here. So let's go ahead and go right to item 43 so we don't have to wait on that. And this is an item on the, our Department of Alcohol and Drug Program courts. Good morning. This morning we're here to ratify the submission of a grant application to the California Department of Alcohol and Drug Programs for the Comprehensive Drug Court implementation. The reason for the ratification is because we got the uh, actual grant um, late and then it took us some time to coordinate all the details and everything and so now we're here. Um, what's exciting about this grant is that um, we're going to be opening up a new adult drug court. Um, there was a requirement out of the State Department of Alcohol and Drugs that in order to receive the OTP funds, which was the expanded funding for Proposition 36, we had to say that we would open an adult drug court. So we said yes <laughs> and signed the paperwork and then went ahead and submitted the grant and were recipients of the grant in order to now open up this new adult drug court. Um, and so that's a partnership between us and the courts, probation, and the rest of the Prop 36 team that will allow us to work with clients that have not been able to succeed through Prop 36 and still give us another choice of how we can actually work with them, a little more stringent in our ability to work with the court system than the defined rules out of Prop 36, which we think will be really more helpful to us. And then the CDCI grant also continues to fund our dependency drug court and juvenile dependency courts. So now I'm going to let Judge White, who took time to come. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, members of the board. Madam Chairperson, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, thank you for inviting us this morning. Thank you for considering this item. Uh, I'm enthusiastic about it because I currently have the Prop 36 court, and as many of you have read or heard, there are challenges with that courtroom. And this, this grant is just another part of the continuum of providing drug treatment to, unfortunately, a significant number of the citizens of Ventura County. So thank you for your support. Uh, I think we built a good team. I think we'll have success. And I look forward to uh, coming back at a later time and being able to report to you uh, the progress on uh, this treatment program. And I'm going to introduce someone that needs no introduction, Karen Staples. Good morning. I just want to reiterate what um, Linda Shulman and, and Judge White have said. Probation is very excited about this. This is another piece to help us deal with the more um, serious drug offender, the more deep end type of offender. Um, hopefully keep them out of the system, um, out of jail, and hopefully keep them out of from going to prison. So we're very excited about it, and, and uh, we're looking forward to it getting started later this week, hopefully on Thursday. Thank you for your support. It's nice to see a, another program to help because, as you're saying, the Prop 36 isn't working as we had hoped. And it's nice to see that we can tailor the program to the individual and, and bring those services. I wish you the best of luck in this. We look forward to hearing about the progress. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have a motion in front of us, which is to um, ratify the submission. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Seeing no objection, that passes. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Work. Thank you. Thank we you. really appreciate you putting it for time certain. It makes it much easier on uh, yes. Judge White. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I just go back to board comments and um, finish up uh, with my comments. Um, it was a busy week as I look back at my schedule, <laughs> uh, but uh, some of the things uh, that I was able to attend is the. Um, uh, American Water Association uh, breakfast where we had a discussion and a, a presentation by um, the um, Metropolitan Water District. And it was really interesting because as they showed over time uh, their um, budget, it showed that there's going to be a complete flip-flop in their um, uh, repair and replacement of equipment and in terms of how much money is going to be needed in the upcoming future. And you just realize there's so much infrastructure out there and 
uh, how much money it costs to replace, and particularly with the cost of construction going up and how much more of their budget is going to be um, just dedicated specifically to, to um, trying to replace aging equipment. And we, we feel that a lot here in Ventura County, too. Um, everything from our watershed protection district, as our facilities start getting older and our uh, water and sewer, and we're, we're seeing a lot of that now also with um, sewer, uh, having to sewer areas and just realizing how much uh, of our budgets are now going to that capital cost. I also attended a uh, breakfast or a luncheon that was provided by the Thousand Oaks Rotary to give citizenship awards to all the stu each school throughout uh, the Caneo Valley, each nominated a student for a good citizenship, so that was nice to attend that. I also was able to attend the opening with uh, Supervisor Long of our, um, well, at least the ribbon cutting, it opened a few months ago of the Human Services Agency building, and what a building. It's really nice to see. And, uh, what a, a tremendous um, win it was, both for the taxpayers in the sense that uh, we were able to purchase that with some one-time funds and not have to go into long-term debt on it, but also for the employees. They've got a really nice place. And what a well-orchestrated move it was to be able to move from the Poli, Poli building out in uh, Ventura and having so many files and <laughs> furniture, you know, that whole thing was uh, really well done in, in that terms. And then also it was a win, I think, for the city of Ventura, who was, uh, we were able to sell the building to them for, and uh, they were going to, I believe, change it to mixed use. So I think it's just turned out to be a real win-win for the taxpayers, too, and our clients. Um, also, uh, went to a, another Triumphal Sanitation District board meeting. I just wanted to let you know we had trying to change the board to an all-elected board. Right now it has the unusual composition of having three appointed people sitting on the board and two elected so that the ratepayers uh, never get to elect a majority of the board. And uh, so that's be raised its uh, head again because one of the elected people is now really wanting to have it become an all-elected board, as I have been pushing for but can't get those three other three votes. So it's been rather frustrating, but it's just interesting because, for example, one of the people who serves on that board as an appointed seat um, comes from the Satakoy Sanitary District, and he has never been elected on that, even though he is sitting in an elected seat. They haven't had an election in the Satakoy Sanitary Districts since at least they can go back in the records to about 1960s, and there's never been an election. So you just realize here's someone who's sitting in an elected seat but never got elected sitting in an appointed seat refusing an election, and you just realize how important it is that people get involved in the process and um, run for offices when they have that opportunity, and that opportunity is made known. Uh, also, I wanted to comment on something that um, Ms. Matthews had pointed out and that was the Mental Health Services Act that was brought to the Mental Health Board to sign off on the final edition of it, and uh, that will be coming to our board. I joined um, Ms. Matthews in abstaining on it for the exact same reason. We had in that in the budget for those funds that are coming from Prop 63 to do a crisis residential center, and it was really um, well explained. Uh, we had someone from the crisis team come and explain to us about how there just aren't beds. So when someone is in a crisis situation <clears throat> and there aren't even the 72-hour beds, um, we end up having people staying in emergency rooms. And that just seems to me they're not getting any psychiatric help there. They're you know, but they are in a locked kind of uh, position. They, there has been, they have to stay for, in a hold for 72 hours and they're staying in an emergency room and that just doesn't seem the right place. Um, being able to open up beds, even if it's just for a short term, uh, will allow people to go from a, um, a locked facility to a crisis residential center and then that will open up some beds. Uh, and I think right now we need to do whatever we can since we don't really have a, a long-term locked facility in our county to open up beds, and that will be one way to do it. So I hated to see us having to eliminate that. We had the funds for it, but to eliminate that program just because there isn't a site. And um, I think we need to really focus our attention, uh, whether it's the Hillmont building that is available, um, I think we need to find something, so that's why I abstain. We'll have that discussion later when that comes back to us. Um, I also wanted to mention that uh, I think a couple years ago when uh, Supervisor Long was chair, we had a goal-setting session on the board, 
and I think it'd be nice to be able to do that again. What we found from it, all the directors of the departments, the department heads, all come around the table together, and they really appreciated having more of an informal ability to discuss with the board what their priorities are. So I've asked um, Mr. Johnson to look at trying to set us up with a goal setting session and, and letting us hear from our directors and, and looking at where we want to head as a county. And then also I would like to ask that we close in honor of the people on this list, and I do want to call out a, a few individuals. Um, uh, Jan Osterhaven, who's one of my um, employees and a longtime employee from the beginning, uh, her mother died, and I would like to close in honor of Margaret Osterhaven. And then also um, I'd like to close in honor of George Edward McLucky, Jr., and he was a YMCA director. Uh, both in Illinois, Arizona, and in California, uh, uh, where he also worked in the Thousand Oaks YMCA. And he also was a part of the Optimist Club in the Caneo Valley Calvary Church Ministry. Uh, he worked with getting, um, helping Russian orphans, raising money for their medical needs, and I know he also will be sorely missed. And I'd also like to close in honor of Fred Bowman, a longtime communications professor at um, California Lutheran University. So with that, um, we'll move on to the uh, rest of our regular agenda. Supervisor I'd like to Beck. ask the board to adjourn in memory of the people on this list also. Thank you. So, thank you. Um, now we can move on to our um, regular agenda again, and I think I, be I believe our first item is item 41, and this is the Fire Protection District. And Chief Nestor. Madam Chair, uh, board members, Mr. Johnston, Kevin Nestor, I'm the deputy chief with the Fire Protection District. And uh, for a number of years now, uh, the fire district has provided dispatch services for all the fire departments in the county and two of the three ambulance companies within the county. And uh, just recently, uh, January of 2007, we opened a new, new dispatch center. And uh, in that dispatch center, we have a new CAD. And that new CAD allows us to communicate with resources in the field. And uh, today, we come to you uh, with our agreements with AMR Ambulance Company and with uh, Santa Paula, an amendment to Santa Paula's agreement that, uh, that you've already reviewed, and um, our agreement with, with, um, set, uh, with Lifeline Ambulance in Ojai. These agreements basically are uh, software, annual software fee agreements, uh, maintenance on equipment, uh, maintenance on software, and, uh, and as relates to Santa Paula, we've added two additional computers in Santa Paula that uh, we'll be um, adding software licenses to. And uh, if you have any questions, that's basically an overview of the agreements and the details have been provided. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have any comments or questions on this item? No. Yes. Not a one. Good Do work on it. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. This is a, a huge improvement for uh, service delivery in Absolutely. Ventura County. Uh, it's uh, no longer uh, do we wonder if we're sending the closest resource. We know we're sending the closest yeah. resource, and that's probably the biggest advantage uh, now. So uh, it's a great, great um, improvement to our service. I agree. And to be able to bring in our, our private sector providers, too, and, and have a good cooperative agreement. Absolutely. Yeah. I know a lot of fire chiefs in the United States, and uh, they're amazed at our ability to have agreements, uh, local <laughs> agreements with fire departments, agreements with the federal uh, fire department, and agreement, agreements with our local ambulance companies. And it's, a, it's definitely a model, definitely a model. Absolutely. I just know from coming, getting involved here in the last few months, I got to say, Ventura County and your department, the sheriffs, they do a great job with all this working together. Mm -hmm. It Absolutely. is, I mean, all the different people you hear from different counties, and just um, even my chief of staff, who part of the High Patrol and worked, you know, through all these different counties, Ventura County does a great job working together with everybody. Absolutely. So it's it's great to hear you're continuing to do that. That's absolutely our strength, is working together in partnership. Move the recommended action. Motion and a second. Seeing no objection, that works. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good job. Uh, our next item is, uh, again, with Ms. Shulman, our Behavioral Health Department, item 42. Good morning again. Uh, 
This item is to uh, ratify and amend our contract with Telecare Corporation. And then um, there's a few other items, but I'll talk about Telecare first. Um, as your board knows, we uh, opened Casa de Esperanza, and our intention had been to relicense four of the five CASAs into the social rehab model, which allows us to bring in a larger amount of Medi-Cal for the billing um, and lessen our county cost and contribution for the running of the service. Telecare Corporation successfully um, completed that licensure process, which is no easy task, so we're grateful to them. Um, back in December, they were licensed as social rehab centers for four of the five CASAs, and that'll allow us to leave one of the CASAs licensed strictly as a board and care for our longer-term residents who won't necessarily meet the two-year criteria of social rehab. So we then had to sit down with Telecare and reconvene our contract with them and re um, determine what the rates and numbers were going to be because we have new billable items that bring in the additional FFP. Um, and so the amendment before you today, one, lowers their total contract value just because it turns out their expenses, now that we're almost done with the fiscal year, didn't turn out to be as much as had initially anticipated. And what's um, promising about that is that the total expenses are actually reduced by um, $500,000 but we only are uh, needing to reduce the county contribution. Uh, the county contribution is reduced by $500,000 um, because there's an additional $150,000 in Medi-Cal, even though the total reduction to their contract is only $300,000. And so we can see that the greater revenue is coming in and that we have a larger savings to the county than the actual savings of the total dollar value of the contract. So that's item number one. Um, item number two, we've uh, had uh, Dr. Kuchinskaya, who um, has been working on the inpatient unit and has requested to transfer over to outpatient services, and we had a vacancy in outpatient services, so it's great to keep her in the system um, and good for uh, the department, and so we're coming before you with a contract for her. Dr. Riang um, is currently a contracted provider for us in the adult system, but she uh, has uh, experience. She used to be a child and adolescent psychiatrist back at Camarillo State Hospital. We have some need in child psychiatry for coverage, and she's agreed to expand her hours, and this modifies her contract to allow us to pay her the child rate for those hours that she'll be working in our child system. And those are the items on this board letter. Okay, so um, we have before us item 42, which is the ratification and approval of the amendment agreement with Telecare. Move the recommended action. Motion can, can I just ask you a real quick question? Mm -hmm. um, you had said that number two with the doctor, she was moving from inpatient to outpatient, mm -hmm. but we're increasing this by 25,000. Who, who was doing this before? What was the, what was the situation? The inpatient unit um, is in the VCMC budget for yeah. their expenses, and this is now in the mental health budget, and so we're having to um, transfer her into our budget in order to manage her costs. Was somebody else doing her work? Do we, do we, is this just Oh, yeah, we had locum tenums at a higher rate, so this is actually uh, helping us to reduce our locum tenums and switching her over. Okay, so with the increase in this 25000 but we're, we're reducing something else. Right, we're, right. We're, we're taking on $25,000. It fits within our current appropriations, right. and instead of paying a locum tenum doctor at a higher rate, which is what we have been paying, um, we'll now be paying her um, out, of that, out of that pool of money. So it's within our current budget. We're not, we're not increasing our budget. We're just giving her this money from the pool of money that we had set aside that we were paying locum tenums for instead. Okay, I guess maybe if we wrote that before, in there, how we wrote that, we were paying this, now we're going to pay her, and it's a, a savings are equal to or something. Okay, looks like it's just increasing. Okay, thank you. Okay, so it is a, a very um, mixed, uh, uh, well, several different items here. Lots One is the ratification <laughs> of telecare. The other is the approval of the agreement with Dr. Elena. Another one is the ratification of uh, amendment to Dr. Ryan, as well as the um, approval of the purchasing agent to sign the amendment to the um, a staff agreement. So we have a motion. Second. And a second. Seeing no objections, that passes. You have item 44 also. Yes. Um, mid year. Um, mid Ms. Ms. Shulman? Yeah. Uh, and I see you have 45 also. Um, we have a um, quick closed session that's been requested. 
Supervisor Bennett, did you want to do that before 930? If, if we could, yeah. Right. Okay. Are, are these two real fast and we could just start 930 slower or do you want to just do her? How long are these two items? Well, I'm just, I, I'm just trying to yeah. move it. We have a couple of minutes before 930 and yeah. a lot of people before 930. Okay, let's run to a closed session and be right back, okay? So we're now looking at item 44. This is just to um, amend our contract with two of the treatment centers that we send children to. Um, we just have different amounts. It's offset by SB90 and Medi-Cal revenues. There's no increased cost to the department. And then also um, we ended up with a little bit of additional funding from our SAMHSA grant, which we want to increase our contract with United Parents for their respite and HAT services. Great. Move the recommended action. Motion. Second, seeing no objections, that passes in item 45. This is our annual contract with the state for our NNA services. It's all of our alcohol and drug programs. It's a ratify, and then also it's the approve for the next uh, three years, um, although we'll keep having to come back to your board every year with updates on the dollar amounts because of the changes in drug medical and various things, but this is the way the state manages that contract, and the ratification is because we got it from them late. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions on this one? Comments? Motion? Move the recommended action. We have a motion 
And we have a second. Seeing no objections, that passes. Thank you. Have a great morning. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Um, our next item now are our 930 time certains. And the first time certain is a presentation of a resolution proclaiming May 2007 Military Appreciation Month. And we had a little bit of that. We have Memorial Day coming this weekend. Um, and I would like to, if uh, Joan Smith is here, if you'd like to come up. And she's our Human Services Agency Deputy Director of Adult and Family Services, and I think you're going to introduce the people from Veteran Services. Let me go ahead and read this, and then I'll come on down, too. Um, Whereas Ventura County citizens have served with every branch of the military in conflicts throughout the world and have been welcomed and home upon their return, and whereas not all wounds are visible and a number of veterans suffer from the stress of war that makes readjusting to community life very difficult, in 1979, the Ventura Vet Center was established to provide assistance to returning Vietnam veterans. Since that time, counseling services have been extended to Ventura County veterans returning from all conflicts. And whereas service members returning from current military conflicts are experiencing stress-related problems in greater numbers, early assistance for veterans with stress issues can prevent those problems from escalating into disorders which can permanently affect veterans and their families. And whereas Ventura County has dedicated the Department of Veterans Affairs professionals working at the veteran Ventura Vet Center to assist our veterans in their successful return to the community. The Vet Center provides individual and group counseling for veterans as well as bereavement counseling to the families of those service members who made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. And whereas the Ventura Vet Center has pursued an aggressive outreach program in its effort to provide services throughout the county, including, a global, including the Global War on Terrorism veteran on staff to provide a bond with recently returning veterans. And it reads, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Ventura County Board of Supervisors does hereby proclaim the month of May 20th through the week of May 20th through 26th, Military Appreciation Month, honoring our active duty service members and veterans and expressing appreciation to the dedicated professionals of Ventura Vet Center and the Human Service Agency's Veterans Services Office. And I'll come on down and present it to you. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Mr. Johnston. I would like to thank you for recognizing May as the Military Appreciation Month and honoring our veterans. The Human Services Agency Veterans Services Office assists hundreds of veterans each year in securing benefits from federal, state, and local agencies. During the past three years, we have assisted veterans and their dependents or survivors in filing over 5,000 claims for assistance, which has resulted in over 3,400 grants being awarded. In addition, we have assisted approximately 7,000 veterans in accessing the VA medical system through the participation in our community clinics. Through our work in partnership with agencies such as the Vet Center, we, will, we are and will continue to be aggressive in our outreach efforts to educate as many veterans as possible about the benefits that are available to them. And I'd like to take a quick opportunity to um, uh, thank and recognize the staff of our Veteran Services Office, some of whom are here today, so if they would please stand up. and. And all of the great work that I just described happens under the leadership of one of our outstanding staff members, Mr. George Compton. If George would come up, please. Madam Chair, it's a real honor for me to uh, stand before you again representing the veterans of Ventura County. And it's a real honor for me to have you uh, recognize the Vet Center because there's no way my office can do all the things that we do without the great support of all the partners I have um, to include, of, of course, the Vet Center and EDD, which we have members here with us. Thanks, guys. And uh, all the things that we do. Uh, last week, we had a, a job fair. We also had a golf tournament for our new veterans' home. And those kind of activities are so important for us. And again, my small office, we couldn't do this. And now I'd like to introduce my partner from the Vet Center and have him come up here and say a few words, Mr. Joe Narkowitz. I brought uh, a, a little packet for each of you. Uh, so that you could uh, find out a little bit more about what we do. We're basically a counseling center for war veterans. So uh, any veteran who served in any war is eligible for our services. 
and uh, our main focus is uh, with the families, uh, particularly of the new uh, OIF, OEF, so Operation Iraqi Freedom Veterans Global War on Terror. And uh, we work real closely with all the other veteran service organizations here, uh, Bob and Bob and all the people at the uh, Veterans Service Office. We have our five clinics here. And uh, so we're the psychological support for the veterans, particularly who have been in uh, conflict. So thank you very much for recognizing us. Thank you, and it's great to have you there for our vets. Thank, thank you. you. Um, I, I, I'll go ahead and present this to you, and then I also want to recognize uh, some individuals in our Veterans um, Services Agency. George Sotelo was selected last year as one of the Secretary of the Navy's retiree council members, and this is his second year of the three-year appointment, so I want to congratulate you on that. Yes. And I just also wanted to note for the month of April, Veterans Services obtained 35 awards totaling $261,000, and in addition they filed 72 claims on behalf of veterans and their dependents and conducted 13 outreach visits. The services you all provide are just so appreciated both by the veterans and the families, but also by all Americans that you are there to support. So thank you very much. Thank you. And we thank you. I'd like to thank you, too, Mr. Compton. You do an outstanding job. I enjoyed the article in the paper. You put a, such a wonderful face on our veteran service as a small but mighty group. And we're, we're very fortunate in our county to have our military partners, but certainly to have a strong support group for veteran services. We thank you. Thank you. I think, um, yeah, I, and I just wanted to point out, you know, with the new veterans home opening and stuff, this is uh, it's going to be a real renaissance for veterans here in Ventura County, and it's been so many years. When I was on the Ventura City Council uh, in the, in the mid-90s is when that started, that conversation started, and just how yes, long it Yes, sir, 15 to, years we've been working on yeah, that veterans To get home. that done, yeah. Uh, we also got a letter from the uh, state, California Department of Veterans Affairs, discussing uh, the progress that we've made in our office, and I'd like to highlight a few of the things on that letter. Um, last year, we increased the benefits uh, in compensation pension uh, for veterans of this county by $5 million, uh, and uh, our CW5 program, where we try to change funds that are in food stamps and, and uh, Medi-Cal, uh, to federal funds, and we were fortunate enough with partnerships with all of the agencies in human services to change, change over $450,000 in state county funds to federal funds. And my, my most exciting program for me is my fee waiver program that, that the state allows me to, to take care of for them. Um, last year in tuition that didn't have to be paid for the students of veterans, uh, was $1.3 million. That's 500 students attending college paying no tuition in the state of California. And that program is for the children of veterans who have a disability, even if it's a very small disability and we help them find it so their children can go to college because it's really important to us to have the veterans make sure that their children get the start that some of us didn't really have. Uh, one of the things we've been able to do now that I'm full strength again is to start our outreach program even more. We're now back into Ojai, and finally we got into the Camarillo Senior Center. Thank you, Supervisor Long. And uh, we think we can, we can make a lot of progress there uh, going to the senior centers, because I guarantee the, the little veteran that gets on the scat bus to go to the senior center in Simi Valley is never going to find me in Oxnard. So we go to them, and we're going to keep doing that. And of course, Finally, our veterans' home. I talked to California Department of Veterans Affairs last week, and it is still on the governor's calendar. We hope he will attend. I can't guarantee that, and nor can they, but we hope he's going to be there. And there was a time change. It's 9 o'clock now in the morning on the 13th, and I hope to see everyone there. And thank you for your support. Thank you. I, I believe LAFCO went and made a meeting on that date, Supervisor Long. I don't know if we're going to be able to make that. So I think we have a conflict. Yeah, and it's a tough one. <laughs> we wish you the best at that opening if we can't make it, but thank you so much. Um, our next item on the agenda is item 30, and this is to receive and file an oral presentation by County Veterans Services Office on its accomplishments as highlighted in the letter. So uh, would you like to do that now?
Uh, I think I've covered most of the points was, on the letter. I was thinking but, that, uh, but it is a separate item, so we can. But uh, <laughs> one of the things that I, I do want to do want to add is that since uh, the letter came out, I have talked to the secretary, and normally at a veteran's home, um, the state has a rep in the veteran's home to do claims and help the veterans. And last week I talked to the secretary into letting me do that, and he'll help pay for a, a rep for our county that we can use part-time over there. So maybe I can keep funding that part-time vet rep that uh, you gave me for two years. So hopefully that will work. <laughs> <Thanks. Upside. laughs> I have one quick question, if you have it, Mr. Compton, the date for the stand-down? Uh, the last week in July. The last, last weekend, weekend in July. July. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Motion and a second. Seeing an objection, that passes. Item 31. This is Older Americans Month also, and I was hoping Supervisor Flynn would be here to present this, but I'm going to present this for him. <laughs> well, as a nice gesture, you know? <laughs> Nothing insulting about that. <laughs> Uh, and I, I believe we have Arnold Robles here. Is that right? Arnold, are you here to accept this? Uh-oh. Shall we hold off on this and let's do, um, go on to our item 32, and that's the presentation by Supervisor Bennett on Public Works Week, and we'll get back to the Older Americans one next. Thank, thank you very much. And my Public Works one, I think you just... We have so many resolutions up here today. Um, uh, I'd like to um, read this proclamation, and we have Ron Coons and, and Jeff Pratt up here uh, to receive the proclamation, and uh, we'll move on to a number of other things. So, Ron and Jeff, you want to come on up um, while I read this resolution to everybody, uh, and then we'll present our awards to public uh, works employees. This is proclaiming May 20th through 26th, National Public Works Week, Whereas the Ventura County Public Works Department provides services to our communities that are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, working towards moving life forward. And whereas the safety, public health, and comfort of our community is dependent on public works facilities and services. And whereas the quality and effectiveness of public works facilities, as well as their planning, design, and construction, relies upon the efforts and skills of qualified and dedicated public works professionals and the efficient operation of public works system and programs such as flood control, water, reclaimed water, sewers, solid waste, streets, highways, and public buildings is supported by an informed and grateful citizenry who understands the importance of the work being done by experienced and committed professionals. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Supervisors proclaims the week of May 20th through 26th a National Public Works Week in Ventura County. And I'd like to turn it over to you gentlemen here for your introductory comments. <coughs> Chair, members of the board, Mr. Johnston, uh, we're very honored to uh, have you recognize our employees uh, this, with this uh, proclamation for Public Works Week. Uh, we have examples of our role models here with us to uh, acknowledge them as our winners of uh, each department's uh, representative. And I want to let you know that uh, they're just the, the role models here. There's all of our people in our department. They're out there when the, the need is uh, greatest in emergencies, but they're out there day to day doing their best to, to make the best service for our county, to provide the safety, efficient service, and comfort for our, uh, employ our whole county family, all of the people in this county. And thank you very much for, for this recognition. And I'd like to have Jeff do the honors there here for our agency, all the five departments. We take turns uh, presenting our picture to, uh, to the board and to the county. So, Jeff, would you go ahead, please? Sure. Good morning, Chair Parks, Board Supervisors, Mr. Johnson. Some of this is going to be a little bit redundant. Um, for the record, my name is Jeff Pratt. I'm with the Watershed Protection District, and I'm joined by five very special colleagues this morning whom I'm going to introduce to you in a moment. Um, Today, we're here to request your board's recognition of National Public Works Week. This is a week originally set aside by Congress in 1960, and during which the thousands of public works employees in North America are, are, are recognized for their contributions. The theme of this year's presentation is moving life forward. Um, traditionally, we've given you a litany of public works accomplishments at this time. This, we, you're not going to do that. Um, instead, we're just going to tell you some of what we've got planned for this week. Um, 
all week long we have on display in the foyer. You probably saw it displays from each of the departments. In addition to that, outside the Hall of Administration, if you come up to the front ramp, you'll see all the heavy equipment that was uh, donated by, well, for the time being, by a couple of equipment companies we'll recognize in a minute. Um, today, we've invited um, several guests and, and uh, schools to attend and look at some of the equipment. Um, we have on display in the pit area today only some hands-on interactive stuff, um, which will be demonstrated by public works personnel. And we have a reception scheduled to follow this presentation um, with refreshments provided by the local chapter of American Society of Civil Engineers. And it was, it, with all of this, we hope to stimulate some interest in a career in public works. Um, of course, the engineers um, were part of uh, this presentation. They couldn't resist these pictures, so I'm going to let you look at those for a minute while um, I ask um, our special guests to step up here. Um, do you want to get these to Supervisor Bennett? Supervisor Bennett, do you want? And they are in order from left to right. <laughs> um, it's becoming a tradition that this time of year we recognize those outstanding individuals in our agency. We've selected five of our very best, one from each department which represents the agency. Um, first up from our Central Services Department is Karen Schoonover. Karen's been an employee of the County of Ventura for almost 32 years. She began her career with the county in July of 1975 as a clerk typist in the Property Administration Agency, where she worked for nine years. She spent one year in the health care agency and joined Public Works in December of 1985. She's currently assigned to the Clerical Services Division, where she provides administrative support to the Water and Sanitation Department, serves as backup to the Clerical Services Manager, and provides retirement and hiring support to Central Services. Karen accepts all assignments with a smile, her greatest assets, or the skill and flexibility she brings to her very tasks and assignments. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Next up from our engineering service department is Wayne Battleson. Wayne has been in the land surveying field for 20 years and has been an employee of the county for the last five. He serves as a mapping supervisor in the office of the county surveyor. He's responsible for reviewing the survey maps and documents submitted to the office and meeting with property owners, developers, cities, agencies, and title companies regarding all the survey documents. His work in ensuring that technical accuracy of these documents is essential in avoiding litigation. Wayne is outstanding in providing timely guidance and reviews on all documents received. His professional demeanor is a key ingredient in the quality of services provided by the County Surveyor's Office. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, next up is Denise Mullen. Denise has been an employee of the Ventura, uh, she's with the Water and Sanitation Department, and Denise has been an employee of the Ventura County Water and Sanitation Department for almost 17 years. She began as an administrative assistant one, one and worked her way up to administrative officer in just three years. Since 2006, Denise has been serving the department as billing supervisor. She's responsible for the utility billing system, which generates water and sewer utility bills for over 12,000 customers. Denise is innovative and forward looking in all aspects of her position. She was instrumental in establishing the current billing system and recently implemented the auto pay option for water and sanitation customers. Thank you, Denise. <laughs> Next up from our transportation department is David Torfe. David began his career with, <laughs> with the county in September of 1984 as a computer-aided mapping technician with the Survey and Mapping Department of Public Works. David was promoted to Engineering Tech 1 in March 1985 and to Engineering Tech 2 in June of 86. David spent two years in the planning department of the Resource Manage Management Agency and then returned to Public Works where he was promoted to Engineering Tech 4. David currently works in the traffic section of the Transportation Department. David is a diligent, careful, and responsive person who is an unsung hero, quietly doing whatever job is assigned to him with a willing and helpful attitude. Thank you, David. And last but not least, Dr. Teresa Stevens uh, with the Watershed Protection District. <laughs> Teresa has an extensive background in consulting, regulatory, and governmental work. She joined the Watershed Protection District Environmental Services Section four years ago as a staff conservationist. She's been responsible for obtaining the majority of the capital and emergency, and emergency regulatory permits for the district during her tenure. She also leads the district in analyzing existing and new regulations issued by nearly a dozen regulatory agencies. Although new to the Matilla Dam Ecosystem Restoration Project, she successfully obtained $5 million in grant funding for two components of the project. Teresa brings diligence, persistence, common sense, and practicality to her work for the district. Thanks, Teresa. <laughs> 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 
And finally, I'd like to recognize our sponsors, American Society of Civil Engineers, for um, their contributions, the reception, some of the gifts that will be given to these people in a moment. Quinn Equipment and Coastline Equipment for the equipment on display outside the Hall of Administration. And of course, the American Public Works Association for some of the giveaway stuff out in the hall and the National Public Works Week. Thank you very much for your patience. Madam Chair. Yes. I'd like to just congratulate the um, employees recognized this morning and, and the entire department. Nice photo app, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the, once the paparazzi have left. <laughs> Just to say that um, our, our public works folks are sometimes are often the behind the scenes that the public doesn't always realize the good work and the tremendous work they do often under a lot of pressure. Um, and they realize it during disasters and they realize it when they want a specific issue addressed. But 24-7 uh, public works does a great job for us and all the employees. Uh, I'd like to thank you and those recognized this morning. I also would, yes. I'd also like to uh, congratulate them too. You guys do great work, and I know I've had the opportunity with Jeff and Ron to come to my office and try to work things out, and they've just been so cooperative in, in what they do, and I just want to say thank you for what you do do. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is item 33, and this is the uh, investment report. And Mr. Matheny, will you be doing this one? Hi. Hi. Good morning. I almost got trampled there. Um, <laughs> well, you know, the wonderful thing is that this is a boring report. Um, I'm pleased to say that our return for the month of uh, April was, again, right around 5%. Um, and uh, the Treasury pool balance is now up to $1.8 billion. Uh, because it came up as an issue a couple of months ago, I'll just point out that the uh, receipts uh, – to the Treasury pool uh, exceeded disbursements by about $250 million uh, up to this point for this year. So uh, I think uh, the Treasury pool participants, uh, schools and other local government, as well as the county, are uh, in good shape. Any questions? Do you have any questions, anyone? Is there, a, is there a change? I was hearing maybe interest rates are going to start trickling down again. Is that true? I don't know if you guys are seeing some of that. Well, we're watching. We, we watch what the market thinks uh, rates are going to be by looking at, uh, at uh, five-year, ten-year instruments. Right. And uh, it seems like they're kind of soft. So That's what I was wondering. Yeah. It, it was wouldn't hearing. be a surprise if we saw a little tick down. Yeah, They've been stable that. for quite some time. Right, right. Okay. It'll affect us a little bit, though. Yes, although uh, it, it won't have an immediate impact upon us, though, because of the laddering discipline that we use in the portfolio, uh, we have uh, been stocking up on some uh, reasonably uh, good yielding investments. But of course, as always, our focus is on the uh, security right. and the liquidity first. Right. So as it ticks down, is it a six-month period or 18-month? That it by the time these are all what six and. The, you know, some of these yields are they held out that long? Uh, we don't pushing? we don't invest beyond a, a three year maturity. Oh, okay. And so. our our portfolio weighting is around two hundred and um, two hundred seventy two days okay. on, on average right now. So we we have a lot of short term stuff, but there but it's balanced off by things that are going to be maturing in a in a year, two years, okay. and up to. So three the softening years. we shouldn't see a whole lot in the next six months or so. It shouldn't affect us much if it does happen. Well, let, let's just give a for instance. If the uh, if the rates drop down to about four percent, you're not going to see an immediate drop in the yield down to four percent for quite some time. Right. Right. Okay. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. 
motion and a second to receive and file. I see no objections. That passes. And then uh, you have the next item also, which is 34, I believe. This is a, a second hearing on the adoption of an ordinance. And we have already heard this. Yes. Looking at the, the second hearing. Thank you. All right. A motion and second, and see no objection. That passes too. Thank, Thank you very much. And now let's do our Older Americans Month. <laughs> I see Victoria jump and some guests. Let me go ahead and read this resolution. It proclaims Older Americans Month, May 2007. Whereas there is an unprecedented trend in our nation's demographic makeup with more people than ever before reaching their senior years, and whereas Ventura County is home to more than 134,000 citizens aged 60 years or older, with more than 43,000 over the age of 75, and whereas older Americans are, as citizens and community members, entitled to lives of dignity and independence, free from the fears, myths, and misconceptions about aging, and whereas, as America grows older, each community <clears throat> must strive to understand and address the evolving challenges and requirements of our older citizens and the people who care for them. And whereas our society is dependent upon the nurturing, support, and resources shared between generations, and everyone benefits from the mutual efforts to meet the needs of America's older persons, now, therefore, be it resolved, the Ventura County Board of Supervisors does hereby proclaim the month of May 2007 as Older Americans Month and urges the residents of Ventura County to join with the Area Agency on Aging in recognizing our older citizens, celebrating their many contributions, and assisting them in meeting their needs. And I'll come on down there. It's nice to see you this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. We have Darlene Benz and Rose Gossam with our advisory council. Hi, thank you for coming. I'll thank present you. this to you. Thank we you. appreciate you serving on our advisory council, too. Thank, thank you very much. Great information. It's a pleasure to, to uh, accept this for, uh, for all the seniors of Ventura County. Wonderful. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your aging does a great job. I know the resolution didn't mention it, but they are also uh, probably our most active citizens in terms of volunteers. Much appreciated. Okay, well, that concludes our 9.30 time certains, and um, it looks like we're about to 10, so we can go to our 10 a.m. time certain. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 10 o'clock, okay. <laughs> this is item 35. Go ahead. Good morning, Chair Parks, um, Board of Supervisors, Mr. Johnson. For the record, again, I'm Jeff Powell with the Watershed Protection District. Uh, the next item on your agenda is the Watershed Protection District's Benefit Assessment Program for fiscal year 2008. Recall that the Watershed Protection District's Benefit Assessment pays for our operation and maintenance, our water quality, and our, some of our emergency reserves. It was originally implemented in 1988 with operation and maintenance. It was modified in 1992 to include water quality, not only for the district, but for the unincorporated county and the 10 cities. Um, in 1996, Prop 218 was enacted. It froze the rates at what they were in 1996, which uh, much to the detriment of some. Um, but the rate's been frozen since that time. The item before you, of course, then continues to carry the rate in effect in 1996. The total assessment for this year will be $11.65 million. Approximately $7.7 .7 million of that is for Watershed Protection District operation and maintenance. About $900,000 will go into our flood damage repair reserve, and $3 million will be um, used for water quality purposes. Staff requests your board's approval of its recommendations as presented in your board letter, and I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Does anybody have any questions? Not seeing one. Uh, that's probably good. Do we have a motion? I'll move the recommended action. Um, just, just a statement to say that um, uh, I know you're working on future uh, actions to really look at what our needs are and how best to support those needs. Because when you look at the 
exhibit A and that everything remains pretty much flat. Um, and we know there's a great need out there. But today we have uh, the conditions that are before us, so I'll move the recommended action. Yes, Supervisor Coy. I mean, these rates that they were, you know, frozen back when they were, why were they so different across the different cities? The cities would request of your board and still do informally, or they still formally request it, but it's become perfunctory. But the cities would assess their needs the year before, request of your board that particular year um, based on the need that was established. And so they fluctuated um, oh. from year to year. I see. Okay. And, uh, and so the city of Oxnard made out quite well. The city of Moore Park gets nothing um, uh, because of uh, some sort of the artifacts of Prop 218. Right. Okay. Are there any cards, Linda? I don't have any cards. Okay. Yes, I did a motion, yes. Um, do you need a four-fifths on this? No, okay. We have a motion and a second. See no objection, then that passes. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. We can now go back to our regular agenda, and that will take us to item number 46 with the Human Services Agency. And this again is on our contract with the Coalition to End Family Violence and others. Hi, Hi. good morning, uh, Chairwoman Parks, members of the board, Mr. Johnston, uh, Judy Rivera with the Human Services Agency. Today we're asking your board to approve and authorize a contract with the Coalition to End Family Violence for the provision of child and elder abuse hotline and after hours employment counseling support for CalWork clients. Um, the cost of this contract uh, is included in our agency's budget for 0708, and um, we believe that it will provide the standard of care that is necessary to uh, serve our county um, and to hire and put qualified individuals on that front line so they'll be able to take correct reports um, and uh, relay that information in a timely manner to our emergency response workers so they can respond. To Thank you. And um, can you tell me how this differs from the, the, the crisis team? That, I guess they're focused basically on behavioral health. I'm mainly on, they're focused on the uh, behavioral health population, mm -hmm. those who are chronically mentally ill or experiencing acute mental illness. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, ho this contract is for uh, specifically for elder and child abuse right. referrals. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes, can I ask a question? Um, you would, and maybe it's our CEO or Paul out there can answer this. You said this was approved in your 0708 budget, or it's included, included. in your 0708 budget. The cost but we haven't approved cost. those budgets yet, though, have we? Uh, no, you haven't. No. As a matter of fact. So, I don't know. How does that work, Paul? Do you want to? <laughs> want to help me out here, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have to make a lot of assumptions when it comes to the budget for next year, and included in the budget when we do prepare the budget will be a listing of uh, grants also for the application, but. Departments have to assume that a number of these programs are continual, will be approved for the subsequent year also. Okay. So we include it in the budget. Okay. Unless, okay. unless you know, we reject it this time and we just remove the appropriations, remove the uh, right. uh, revenue at that point in time. Okay. So that's pretty standard on most of these. Okay. Thank you. I'm learning a lot about county financing. There's a lot to learn. Oh, boy. Okay. Thank you. Motion and a second. Seeing no objection, that passes. We'll go on to item 47 now, and this is with the CEO's office and Ms. Tompkins. Good morning, Madam Chair, Board Members, Mr. Johnston. Del Tompkins with the County Executive Office. This item is a recommendation that your board select one of the three applicants for an appointment to the Area Housing Authority for a four-year term. You had three applicants for this position. It's a vacancy that occurred when one of your uh, commissioners, Susan Broidy, moved and she's now uh, appointed to the Area Housing Authority Board by the City of Ojai. So that's how this vacancy occurred. Your three applicants are Mr. Anthony Bellasalma from Moore Park, Mr. Tom Black from Simi Valley, and Ms. Catherine Robson from Camarillo. And you'll note that on the attachment to the board letter, we provided you with some background information and experience for the three candidates based on the applications that they turned in to the clerk. 
Two of your candidates, Ms. Robson and Mr. Belisalma, have uh, either current or previous uh, experience with the uh, Area Housing Authority Board. I believe we're asked to select on yeah. um, attachment A, it mentions their, highlights some of their. Yeah. <laughs> I would move the appointment of Catherine Robson Camarillo. <laughs> well, I tell you, um, you have some really qualified individuals. See, yes, Tom Black was a city and county supervisor, grand jury member, and, and Catherine Robson also has inc really good credentials too, as they all do. So. But the motion then? Catherine is, Robson. Is okay. And do we have a second on the motion? Second. We have a second. I, I can't put up Mr. Sure Black. You yeah. Sure you can. Mm -hmm. Move to. Um, so how do I do how this? Do we, how do you do <laughs> that? We have a motion and a second. Uh, so, oh. No. No. I don't have one here. Pardon me? You've got somebody else? Yeah, well, this Mr. Mr. discussion, let's talk about oh, okay. it. okay. I mean, you want to talk about you want to talk about uh, Ms. Robson? Robson? You want to say something? Well, I think if you look at her background and experience, she's she's served. Um, she's very committed to serving. The note down below talks a little bit more about why she would move from the city designation to the county one. Um, she's a uh, um, certified financial planner. I think she brings just a lot of skill sets, too, and I, I know that she has been very diligent in her service. Okay. Um, let me just say a little bit about Mr. Black himself, a, a, a very strong um, person, has a lot of qualifications himself, very active, uh, very well known, um, is and also active in this different things community, has a lot of interaction, knows what goes on in this, this county and community too. Um, what I can say about it. I think if you're a very qualified person, this is a tough one. It is a tough one. Yeah, it is. I mean, you, she, she, you brought some really qualified people here. All of them. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, and then it, was, it mentions that uh, Ms. Robeson is, is going to be moving, she, um, and her right. term doesn't expire to 2008 in the city of Camarillo. And we need this right now? Yes. You mm -hmm. have a vacancy at the, at the so moment. So Mr. Black can move in right now. Does that make it easier for you? Well, Ms. Robeson is possibly moving. No. She doesn't know yet. She may remain as a Camarillo appointee. I'll, no. I will compromise. <laughs> I will. Good. I appreciate that. Thank you. So do you want to take your motion off the table and we we'll have entertain a new motion? We have a motion to approve Mr. Tom Black. We have a second. Thank you. Seeing no objection, Mr. Black wins. <laughs> I'll Thank encourage Ms. Robeson to stay in Camarillo. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's nice to see such great qualifications. Our next item then is item 47, and this is with our CEO's office and Mr. Dursey. Morning, board members. Paul Dursey, County Executive Office. We're asking your approval uh, for the conceptual approval to exercise our purchase option for uh, 2220 Gonzalez Road. Right now, we're hopefully the uh, the uh, board letter pretty much explains everything, but uh, just a couple highlights. The price uh, could be anywhere between 10.2 and 10.8 is our purchase price option. The uh, value currently we ex uh, estimate about 18 million. We have plenty of needs to uh, put into that building. Matter of fact, we listed uh, we listed items. We listed over 100,000 square feet of needs, and we only have a 50,000 square foot building. So, and only about 19,000 is coming up uh, for available very soon. Included in that needs, you know, just to we included the, uh, for example, the, the Ag Commissioner. We probably wouldn't put the, ag, well, not the greatest spot for the Ag Commissioner probably. However, we just wanted to make sure that uh, your board knew that we're evaluating everybody in this process to see who, what the highest and best use for that building is from a county operational standpoint. Nobody, no one department has dibs on that building at this point in time. So, so we want to make sure that departments knew that and your board knew that we're, we will be evaluating that process. I did notice that you didn't throw my office into there. No, no, just a little out of. Still looking. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, we do have, we do expect long-term lease savings, and we will. And uh, like I said, on, on recommendation two, we're going to have to evaluate different financing options because of some uh, private use limitations due to the tax ramifications of tax-exempt financing. We're going to have to evaluate because there are some 
lessees in that building that will be paying part of the rent. So it becomes a tax exempt uh, financing issue. So we'll, we'll evaluate some other uh, financing options. Can, so, I ask you, can I ask you a question? Yes, Supervisor Foy. The uh, Ag Commissioner? Yes. Where does his office have to be? I've it doesn't 8, have 000, to be. I've got 8,000 feet right next to me. It's <laughs> vacant. We're already paying for it. It's perfect. I, th I think the Ag Commissioner would probably better answer that. He's going to be walking around. <laughs> It's a courthouse. He's protected. It's, it's yeah, but there's right. more ag in my district than yours. <laughs> <laughs> but it's free. We're already right. We're already got it in that storehouse. Free? Oh, right. Nothing's oh, free. don't want a few more games. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, Supervisor Lyon. Just a comment. I appreciate that for the public record. You may note that this list that you included was just to give us an example of what the needs are. Because when I saw this, I talked to our ag commissioner, and he said, "Well, I, I didn't ask that that be put on there because." There is great um, sensitivity to where the Ag Commissioner is located. Obviously, the agricultural community would like him to be uh, accessible and all da 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 da. There was an office of the Ag Commissioner in, um, at Camarillo Airport at one time. Um, and, uh, but the site that's in Santa Clara Valley right now is a historic building, but it, there's no question that the Ag Commissioner spoke for his staff to say they have the conditions there aren't optimum. It's a 70 year old building. But there needs, to, there needs to be a lot of discussion as to where he may relocate and also if there would be need for satellite offices if, if the uh, administrative operational side moves um, so that the agricultural industry, who he serves, has access to him. So just for the public record. But on the item itself, um, I'll move the recommended action. We do have a motion and a second. See no objections. That passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next item is item 49, and this is uh, regarding a contract amendment agreement. Ms. Marty Robinson. Robinson from the County Executive's Office. Um, today we're asking your board to approve an amended contract with Thompson, Cobb, Basilio, and Associates. Uh, your board requested that we pursue uh, additional review of the Treasurer Tax Collector uh, Office. That was an outgrowth of the Public Guardian uh, review process. <clears throat> the scope of work is to include departmental uh, review of in departmental internal controls, key departmental processes, uh, leadership management, organizational structure, uh, department personnel management, as well as investment policies and practices. Um, the contract with Thompson, Cobb, and Basilio was originally at 56750 It will be expanded to 116500 to cover this uh, requested work. Do you have any questions? At our uh, last meeting, we discussed the opportunity we can have in transferring some of the um, conservatorship public guardian efforts to another department, will this uh, audit be able to assist us in giving us those options? We are looking at that internal to our office. We have already put together some of the lists regarding where the I'll public guardian that. resides throughout, throughout mm -hmm. the state. So I think that we will be able to actually get back to your board with that report sooner than this one will be completed. Okay. So it's not as one of the work items, but if you want us to include it. Right. This this audit was the uh, is the other side of the office uh, having mm -hmm. to do with internal controls of the treasury, uh, and in conjunction with the auditor's office, uh, it's been scoped for that purpose. The uh, issues of organizational realignment you know, we'll do sooner and uh, separately. Good. Well, and I'm really glad that we are doing this one because you have if you have one part of your department that's not working right, we need to make sure that the rest of it is so. Do we have any comments on this, Supervisor Floyd and Supervisor Long? This contract you said that was for fifty-nine seven fifty originally. Is what it it says was here. originally for fifty-six. It, for the, the contract for the PGA scope of work yeah. was fifty-six thousand seven hundred fifty. This uh, proposed scope of work is fifty-nine thousand seven hundred fifty. So, so combined, that is one hundred sixteen thousand. We are required to come to your board whenever it's over right. 100000 Is it is it is this a fixed contract or is it by the hours what they're doing? Is, well, is, is this a, just a maximum? Well, it's an up to, but... Okay. How did they do in the last we one? We negotiated down from a... <laughs> did, did they use the last 56 last yes, they time? they did. They I found a way to use it. Okay. I would anticipate that they're going to use this. Too. I would anticipate that too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
And my question is, what is the timeline um, do we anticipate for the final report? Uh, in August, the final report should be August. out, and okay. we should have some uh, internal uh, review timelines, too. There are a couple identified where we'll get progress reports, and we can bring those to your board if you uh, okay. desire. Thank you. And just note that we did have a, a slight <coughs> revision on that board letter, too. Right. Okay. Do we have a motion on this one? I think we need to do it. Move the recommended action. Motion and a second. See no objections. That passes. Our general services agency is up at bat now. <laughs> this is a regarding a resolution of intent. Morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Mr. Johnson, um, Greg Bergman, General Services Agency. Item 50 is part of the annual benefit assessment process for the Oakview School Preservation and Maintenance District. On March 20th of this year, your board approved a resolution uh, directing the preparation of the engineer's report. The letter accompanying that resolution indicated that GSA would return to your board requesting further actions once the report was completed. The item before you today is a resolution indicating the intention of the board to levy an assessment on behalf of the district, provide preliminary approval of the engineer's report, and provide notice of a public hearing to be held on June 12th meeting. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And this is a requirement to keep this moving on. The yes, it is. Creator. Mm -hmm. I have no questions. Any questions? M motion? I'd like to move the recommended action. Motion, second, seeing no objections. Thank you for the report. Mm -hmm. Item 51 is next, and this is uh, regarding our water and sanitation department. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Mr. Johnston. For the record, my name is Bruce Belusky with the Integrated Waste Management Division, also known as IWMD. Um, item number 51 is a request for board approval to allow IWMD to apply to the State Waste Board for approximately $25,000 in funding to be used for the collection and management of used oil and oil filters throughout the county unincorporated area. Uh, upon receiving notification of a grant award, I will return to your board to request acceptance of the funds. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Can I ask a question? Yes. I think it's, it's, a, it's a great idea, no question. What are we doing now with that? How are we, we just uh, doing our, actually, our own? Spend? Yeah, this is actually the ninth consecutive okay. year where we've requested okay, these Okay, so funds. We're, we're just a continuation funds. again. That's correct, yes. Just, is it the same amount every year? Or is it uh, going well, it's up? based on um, 27 cents per capita approximately. Um, they, at the state, use a formula to determine how much funding is available, and then they defray that over the population. So that's nothing to do with what need we have is just a, that's correct right. it's determined by the state okay and this is one of those items too that i would think that uh as we review how we can reset our agenda that you could authorize applying and if we get it receive the grant without having him come back again when we do get it which you hope they yeah, have longer. that's correct we actually had done that but there was some um, difficulties in our okay in we'll our work on that one that's correct <laughs> so we have a motion on this Motion and Thank a second. You. Seeing no objection, that passes. Thank you very much. Item 52, Ms. Hernandez and the Sheriff's Department. Good morning. Laura Hernandez, Assistant Director, Sheriff's Office of Emergency Services. Uh, item 52 is a request that your board ratify the emergency, the submission of the emergency management performance grant for 2007. We had less than 45 days to um, submit this application and put it through all the necessary approvals, including approvals from the cities who share in the um, receipt of these funds. Uh, the emergency performance grant is a grant that we've received since 1972. Uh, we apply and receive, this, um, receive funds for this grant every year to support our local emergency management programs. It's used to purchase EOC supplies, public information materials, and offset salaries for the personnel dedicated to emergency management here in our county. So uh, we request your approval on the ratification, and we'll return to the board to accept, uh, to request approval to accept the, uh, the grant once it's approved. And Thank I'm you. I'm happy to answer any questions. Just a quick process yeah. question. Um, and you, you, you noted due to short time constraints, the grant, Yet this is a grant that we have been receiving since 1972. That's correct. 
So is, what's the issue with the window of, of knowing that we're going to be applying and coming to the board to? Well, we have to wait until the state issues the program guidance, which tells us what the, what criteria that we have to adhere to under the grant. And that was not issued to us until, that was not issued until March 28th. And then we had a meeting with our cities in April in which we presented to them the formula for distribution, and they had to vote on that process. Okay. So it took some time. Thank you. And do we have a motion on this one? Move the recommended action. Thank you. Second. And a second. Seeing no objections, that passes. The next item is our correspondence agenda, and these are items 53 through 58. Do we have a motion on that? Move to proceed and file. Motion and a second. Could I make one comment? Yes, please. If I might. On the board's agenda, on this correspondence agenda, you see two letters that have been received regarding, well, let me see, one letter, regarding the 10-year strategy to end homelessness. And that's just a reminder to the board that our next meeting, June 5th, that item will be before us. And CEO staff is working on the internal circulation of the document with agencies and et cetera to try and make sure when it comes to us we are prepared for it. If you have questions, I would ask that you please get them to the CEO's office because, unfortunately, on June 5th there is a deadline for us to have this moved and moved forward. And there are two letters, one for the Area Housing Authority and one from the Community Commission. We've been getting quite a few. Yes. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, now that we've done the motion to receive and file, I just want to apologize. I've been stepping out quite a bit. My mom took a little spill back in Indianapolis, and I'm just checking on her and stuff. So I think she's going to be all right, but I'm just, that's why I keep checking. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so I may step out. Sorry to hear about that. We'll go ahead now. Our last item left before we go to closed session is item 36, and this is a 10.15 a.m. time certain, and it is our county executive officer giving an oral presentation on the budget. We're having some technical difficulties, I guess. Let's take a five-minute break. Let me tell you my show if you guys run for cover. No, I'll tell you, he really wants to have fun.
We'll come back from our short little recess of the May 22nd meeting. Mr. Johnson. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Paul and I are going to do this together. Uh, I'm going to steal a line from Butch Britt. Uh, he, he attributes this to the military, but I think it's also attributable to good marketing people and to good trainers, and that is you tell them what you're going to tell them, you tell them, and then you tell them what you told them. And only I not only do that, but I do it on a repeated basis <laughs> in the hope that the message eventually gets across. Uh, my purpose is to try to give a voice <coughs> and put a face on uh, those things that are not imminent, but are clear, clearly obligations that we have to face. And, uh, you know, that expression that says, I can't be broke because I still got checks left, uh, People laugh about that, but that is a sort of a psychological problem that uh, particularly government faces, and that is if you don't have to deal with it right now, why why borrow the trouble? Uh, my job is just to try to get you focused out there in the future, uh, or would this be the near future, uh, to be sure that we don't create a problem that becomes so large that it's either insurmountable or that it creates undue pain in order to make the adjustment. Um, the, the issue we're, we're dealing with is sort of when is, uh, what is the difference between an expense and an expenditure. You know, an expenditure <clears throat> is when you actually pay the money out, but an expense is incurred whenever that, you know, for example, on depreciation, as, as, a, as a capital asset starts to depreciate, you're going to have to, whether it be your car or your house, at some point there's going to have to be repairs or replacement. And it's very hard to get people to save for those things, but we have some of those issues that we have to deal with in the case of the uh, health care system and also in the case of the uh, jail system. So we're going to make an attempt here to um, get our arms around what it is that you're going to be dealing with. Uh, we started this, uh, this budget year, the current one, with the design phase on the um, jail. We thought we would have a report for you by this summer. And then the state of California weighed in with some other uncertainties as to how large that jail uh, increase needs to be. So the sheriff's working diligently on trying to get that for you. But we wanted to put it in the context of what's been going on uh, in the budget. And so I'm going to repeat what I said last week, and then I'm going to add to it. And uh, this was a chart that was intended to, to point out to folks the volatility the, uh, the red lines are the assessed value, and you can see that there's been a steady climb in assessed value, and our income in the general fund is 90 plus percent uh, based upon this. So one would say, well, that, that's working pretty well for us. But if you take a look at the uh, uh, actual increases in the role, it's up and down, up and down. And so your board, as a policy, uh, decided, see, this goes back to 1983. And so you can see the fluctuation. Some of this was caused by realignment where the state of California changed the rules of the game and took some of your property tax. Uh, then we had some really good years for whatever reason. And then we had some bad years in the beginning of the 90s when the, uh, uh, you, you'll recall your roles actually decreased, not in total dollars, but the, uh, the valuation on many properties was taken down as a result of the early 90 uh, recession, or uh, I guess we call it a recession in California. So anyway, you see that volatility, and so your board started and said, well, what we need to do is get a rolling average, and that was a decision made around uh, 2001, and we went back uh, to 1992, and we started trying to figure out where that line would be. So if we stayed with the rolling average, this is kind of where we are. And then here's the important part of the story. Uh, you have a rolling average that says that on average you should be uh, receiving 8 plus percentage uh, increase in your role this year. But in actuality, uh, the fluctuation in the role is not going to meet the rolling average. And we go with the real numbers as best we know them, not with some estimate. So. Uh, Trouble with averages, as they say, with your feet in the oven and your head in the refrigerator on the average, you should be comfortable. But uh, that doesn't work that way in real life. So um, we just wanted to get that on the board for you. And then we wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, the fund balance. And if you go back into the 90s, you know, we didn't have much of one. At one point, we were ranked in terms of cash to revenues last in the state of California back in uh, 2002. And you can see by this chart what happened to us. 
here's where we fell off the chart basically we were less than zero and we were using tobacco settlement money which legally or technically was uh, general fund cash but because of the ordinance that restricted that for health care only you really didn't have a health uh, a general fund balance at all but all of the policies that have been in place you can see we made a pretty good stride in 01 and then we kind of leveled out here and now we've been making some gains and we are up something less than nine percent with a target of 15 percent which is what is recommended by the uh, uh, governmental finance organization or officers uh, so we are we're moving in the right direction but we're still a ways away from reaching the goal this was the chart we gave you last week to kind of go with the uh, issue of the new jail expansion that's going to be required and the uh, dark line, which I believe is blue, but it looks like it's black here, uh, that kind of gives you an idea of what you might expect on revenues up through 2012. And then the red line shows you what the expenditure would be if you, if you actually hold the line on your base budget. That is, you don't expand program uh, or increase beyond the basic assumptions and inflation. And so you can see that you're going to have a few good years here and then the lines cross over and that is when we have to open up uh, the jail and it's not just for the financing of the jail although you'll have to retire the debt on that but you will also have the issue of operating the jail which is substantial this will be you know new staff and expensive staff public safety staff so if we follow this which is the recommended proposal uh, once we get here, you can see we're 11 to almost 16 million dollars uh, in 11, 12, 12, 13. Uh, that's a lot of money, <clears throat> but in relationship to to a what will then be probably an 850 million dollar general fund, it's a manageable number. We start now and we start making adjustments, and by the time you get out here, depending on how you finance the uh, the debt and uh, their number of choices that you would have to make you should be able to close that gap so that chart is to say that under the plan it's manageable and this is at option two you were given four options this is the intermediate option this is the one that I think projects that if we were dealing strictly with our own local needs that it would take us through the year 2017 uh, the price per bed is a little higher doing it that way but the cost of operations is less and it's more affordable but your board will have to decide what you're going to do in that regard Mr. after you Johnston, get. Yes. Um, is there a, an opportunity to apply for grants or federal grants for the jail, or you know, the governor's doing all this trying to increase, you know, jail? Those system? are all the things that maybe are going to help you here. Okay. Uh, but we don't know what they are yet, and we don't know what the price of those grants would be because they normally uh, do come with, you know, requirements. And the concern that the sheriff and I have is that if the uh, demand on the local system as the result of some realignment in how prisoners are transferred to the state starts to hit at the local level, you might get some money to help expand your jail, and then you will fill that new capacity up with uh, new inmates that will be kept here instead of somewhere else in the state. So anyway, those are things that are still out there. So this is not meant to be a kind of a doomsday scenario, just but this is. is this is the most conservative, assuming that we get no grants in that respect. This is predicated on everything we know now and all the policies that are currently in place. Okay. So then you will have the opportunity to change some of those policies if you should choose, and you will have uh, the possibility of getting some help from the state and federal government. We don't know that. And the, and the big issue here is, it's the, the the tremendous increase in operation and maintenance costs. The one-time cost of the jail is one thing. And you don't get grants for operation and maintenance cost here. Right, right. Yeah, that's true. That's uh, uh, yeah. That is the biggest point because uh, Paul, we're looking at what uh, about a ten million dollar uh, a ten million dollar debt service, but we're looking at like a twenty three million dollar operating cost. So even if you got all your debt covered, you still have that twenty three. But it would certainly you can see twenty three would do, or or ten million would go away to eliminate this gap, but. This is manageable. This is not meant to be frightening. The next slide is meant to be frightening. Can, can I ask you, John, Johnny, can I ask yeah. you real quick? Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> but as you said, this takes option two into account. Right. And option two means that we're going to build this and hopefully be up and running in 2010 or 11. Right. Which 
only keeps us through 2017. Mm -hmm. So it really only covers a five or six year period of time for us. We really don't get a lot of future, even though we're going to be in this situation, right? That is, that is one of the considerations that your board will have to wrestle with because when we did the Juvenile Justice Center, you'll recall, we predicated that, or the, those who did the uh, census you know, projections, uh, ended up with a facility that was larger than what would have been required based upon the change in sentencing practices by the courts and created more capacity. So you know, let's assume that similar scenario played out, you might be Take your uh, option two might take you all the way into 2025. Uh, we, right. we we don't know. On the other hand, it could go the other way. So again, these are for planning purposes to give you sort of an idea where you are. This is the most modest, and it's going to take a little bit of a struggle to deal with it. So if you if you make the assumptions that the pop the inmate population is going to increase even faster, uh, then those gaps get larger. Professor Long, and one of the things that you mentioned is the the in the corrections reform that the governor's proposed and working on, he set up the sentencing commission. What they may do may change those projections and numbers over the long term. Um, what we do as a state in the whole sentencing process. And um, the other piece is the reentry facility piece that's, that's uh, for both the adult population could also change how you house low level inmates in corrections. So that's the unknown that the sheriff, I'm sure, is NCO challenged with as we are up and down the state on, on what to really project our needs are. What gives me concern is we're doing a good job getting to that 15% uh, reserve that when those little lines cross that we're going to be cutting into that reserve. Well, I would hope that you wouldn't. I would hope that when you, these lines cross, you already started making decisions in the inter, intermediate uh, interim period to bring them together so that you don't touch your reserve until your reserve gets above that 15% mark, and then, uh, then that money would be simply one time only. But it could go for, say, construction, but it wouldn't help you on your operating expense. And since the only thing that we have real control on is reducing expenditures, that, that's the way we get to... So uh, those lines don't overlap, and we—that's part of it. Uh, yeah, that—that that is the threat. Is that if you have limited ability to increase the revenue side, right? Uh, therefore, you know, it has to—it's a zero-sum game, as they say. If you've spent it here, you've got to take it from somewhere else. And you've spent about five, six years with forced retrenchment, so it's not like you have areas that you can go into and say, well, for 40 years they've. They fattened up. Now it's time to take something. Uh, you made the, most of the departments pretty lean, assuming you still are in favor of the programs they're delivering. So now we go to the chart that uh, if we do not uh, hold this line, which is to follow your basic uh, budget uh, principles that you've adopted, if we vary from that uh, and get too much wishful thinking, then this is what happens, and that would be, you know, uh, being of sound mind, we're spending everything that comes in, and then we reach the point where the jail opens, and then you can see what happens to the gap. It just becomes huge. We've got, what, 30, 35 million to $40 million, uh, as opposed to 10 to 15. Now, these, are, again, are, are, are estimates based upon assumptions, but uh, it gives you some idea of what policy decisions you'll need to make in the short term in order to prevent that gap from getting that large. And again, this was on the uh, option two. <laughs> we haven't run a scenario for option four. But we also haven't run a, a scenario uh, saying that the cavalry arrives and the state helps you, you know, pay for the, for the building. This option, like I said, option two, is just taking care of our own. That has nothing to do with what the state's going to do. Potentially. Right. Yeah. So and so maybe we should do to some charts, you know, ex excluding the, uh, the cost of the construction and the debt service and just say what would happen in terms of the staffing requirements to actually operate the facility because you may remember down in Los Angeles when I was uh, there, fortunately I was not responsible for this piece of their, <laughs> but the, they built something they called the Twin Towers and it was the brand new facility to deal with their overcrowding and then it sat empty for two years because they couldn't staff it. Uh, so we in this county have been much more prudent and we sort of plan so that we can do these things, but this is the kind of, uh, you know, harsh reality we've got to look at. Um, now, I may be getting to the charts that I'm not sure I can read anymore. Paul, get up here. <laughs> uh, let's see, what are we talking about here? The, you know, the general fund net cost, uh, this was an effort to give you an idea of where the growth is occurring. 
So I'm going to let Paul sort of walk us through it so I don't trip over it. Yeah, this particular chart is basically broken up our general fund and as far as net county cost. Oh, and it goes, you know, covers the last 10, 10, I think 11 years. But it basically breaks it into our different program areas, including at the bottom is, I think that's environmental balance. And then we go up to uh, other administration of justice. And then uh, goes right on up with general government, uh, health and human services. And then uh, I think this, this other one is other general fund, the red. Uh, that's health and human services. It's this orange one here, and then the red one with the squares is other general fund, and then up at the top is is public safety, and those are just that public safety is the four departments, uh, four uh, sheriff, DA, probation, and and uh, public defender. The other little piece down here, it's this yellow piece down here, is also technically administration of justice program area, but we we separate that because that's, uh, for example, our our share of the courts, our share of uh, uh, indigent defense and grand jury those are those three areas so they're relatively insignificant relative to the rest of the part I think the, the bottom line here is that most for the most part the departments are, are not growing significantly in net county costs we all everybody has gone up a little bit over the years uh, we have a little bit uh, uptick here and that deals with uh, tobacco settlement right and that how that was accounted for in that particular year and then it goes and then it goes uh, back down again the subsequent year so the main significance of this is it, it is as you would expect it to be with public safety being the number one priority in the county, that even with all of the debates over 4088, that's where the money was pushed and, and that's where the money needed to go. Uh, but the uh, the dilemma now is, is uh, actually the sheriff and I, when we talk, I say, you know, you're your own, uh, you know, toughest competition because this is the basically the operating budget. Now we, we add to that. Uh, an expanded jail and an expanded need for uh, operating and staffing that jail uh, and so those dollars uh, aren't going to be available now if we're going to make them available when the jail comes online so it just kind of give you an idea of proportion as to what's going on the money has not gone in these areas the, the board's been really tight uh, as, as best we could now this line uh, is this other general fund we'll get into a detailed explanation of why that one went up and that in some ways was a shift in where we reflect cost for example things we talk about the mitigation account at one time we used to take and put salary money uh, in every department's budget we took a salary savings for vacancies uh, but we still left all the appropriations in the budget we made a decision about six years ago to shift that to where your board controlled what you called the mitigation account and we took a 25 percent of that vacancy money and we held it off so that you can move it around to cover your expenses it's a more complex explanation than that but anyway that's the only line that's gone up everybody else uh, operationally is pretty flat uh, let's see what's what surprises what's this okay this Supervisor is the Ron, public, yeah, public oh, yes the, you want me to go uh, back? Yeah, just just for the public clarification on the general fund net cost on this line with the public safety, that is just, again, general fund net cost for public safety. It doesn't include trust funds, right. 172, any of that. that. You know, any of the direct revenues. Yeah. Okay, so then we took a look at, you know, within the public safety department, some idea of how the, the growth is occurring and where the dollars have been placed. And... Uh, you can see that most everything's pretty flat here. Uh, you saw an, an uptake here in the probation area, and that was when their facility, the Juvenile Justice Center, came online. So you can see what it does to expenses. It moved them up, and in, while they flattened out, they stayed up <laughs> at a flat level. Uh, they don't go back down. Uh, over here, we have the uh, sheriff's uh, expenses. And those have continued to climb, and primarily that was an issue of competitive salaries uh, in, a, in an attempt to recruit and retain uh, officers. But you, again, you can see where where the money is, which puts the the sheriff in the difficult position that he he has a large part of the budget, and then he ends up having to compete against himself to try and deal with his constitutional mandate, which is detention. From here, why don't we go? This, uh, Paul, you can explain. This is just kind of a, a preview for what we will be presenting a little more, in more detail on, on uh, June 5th, this preliminary budget. 
This is just a, a pie chart of the appropriations, and the, the big the big areas are uh, the red is is health and human services, and the green is public safety. Those are the two main. Uh, as far this is appropriations, this is appropriated dollars. O overall, it's about 875 million dollars of appropriations, and you can see that about uh, whatever 600 and 40 of that is to those two departments. This is appropriations, okay? And then this, this up, the next one is the net, net cost. And this is basically how we allocate our general purpose revenues. And we have about, we're expecting about $315 million of general purpose revenues, and this is how it's allocated in uh, next year's, in the budget that we will be presenting on June 5th. So you see the good chunk of it, again, goes to public safety. Uh, you see the red, it goes down to 28 million. The red is health and human services because they are, a lot of that is revenue offset. They get a lot of subventions from the state and federal government. So they are not as costly from a net county cost standpoint and not as many local dollars, so to speak, or our general purpose revenues goes, goes towards uh, those particular functions. Although appropriation wise, they're almost the same as the public safety. Public safety does not have the revenue sources that the health and human services areas do. Therefore, the net cost in the, in the public safety area is greater. And the other big piece of the pie is, again, coming back to other general fund, which includes uh, a lot of uh, areas that uh, are, uh, we have the mitigation account that, that Johnny referred to. We have uh, uh, contribution accounts, and we have the, uh, let's say, buy-down accounts uh, for uh, salaries and benefits. Yeah, and Mr. Darcy, a lot of the uh, health and human services I mean, if you look at the last chart and then this chart, you, you, you can see a lot of the benefits of leveraging. Almost all of the grant money comes in only comes in if you agree to put in X amount of your own money. Sometimes you'll get two or three dollars of grant, but not grant. I shouldn't say it's not grant money. I mean, government reimbursement money and stuff. So could you just go back one as we'll see the chart and Sometimes say, nine you know, that, that's three hundred and what? Eleven. Three hundred eleven. Eleven million. Okay, and it's leveraged by. 29 million, 29. right? So 29 million dollars worth of expenditures will draw you down. But if you cut that, you said, "Oh, let's cut that 29 uh, to 20." Uh, that would draw your 311 million down by, mm -hmm. you know, maybe 75 million dollars or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah, probably the most dramatic. That that's about a 10 to one little, maybe uh, yeah, about a 10 to one leveraging. But in certain areas like health, uh, the human services area, uh, there are many dollars where we put up six, seven cents. Uh, to generate a dollar, so that's 93 cents, 94 cents comes in from the other governments. Okay, let's see what else we've got up here. Uh, Paul, you, yeah, these are charts I haven't seen before, yeah, so tell us about the names. Surprises <laughs> to everybody. Yeah. Um, this is basically what we're showing. Is this, this blue line here is what we've, in our negotiated 4088 settlement agreement, that's, our, that's what we are obligated to spend on public safety according to our settlement agreement that we that we uh, accomplished I think it was in 2005 two years ago at about this time we came up with a settlement agreement with the public safety departments we came uh, up with it you may recall something we referred to as the formula based entitlement that took into account inflation and a lot of things and said that under all circumstances this is kind of what the public safety should get in the worst of times they would share in whatever downturn there was but overall they should come back up to that line right and then what we have what we're showing on the green is is the public safety actual uh, uh, net county cost relative to the uh, obligation under the 4088 allowance just showing that that uh, public safety is the number one priority from that standpoint in general the the numbers increasing here under the blue have been a little over five percent, and we're expecting from this year to this year. This is a lot of budget. This is next year's budget, as we will be proposing on June 5th again. But the increase here is about a five five point six percent. This blue increase here, and they're going up in the, in the neighborhood probably around ten percent, so double that amount. So just just to give you information relative to what the obligation under the uh, 4088. And you see the 4088 is still going up by the about like I said five percent a year. So. But the policy decisions had been bent <clears throat> as long as the money was there was to, uh, in effect, overmatch it, overmatch the formula. Then we have, uh, let's see, these were what our guidelines. Yeah, the purpose was to maintain current service levels. This is what the way the budget's being presented, taking current service levels, taking state budget uh, 
into consideration that they are uh, not structurally balanced, and we continue to hear numbers that fluctuate quite a bit at the state as to where they are. But these are the different things that affect our budget. Uh, if the state decides to start making cost shifts in order to try to bring theirs into balance, that pushes directly down to us. Uh, Federal Deficit Reduction Act is another one where they change the rules and what they're going to be sending to the local governments. And then, uh, Paul, you know, yeah, why don't you come here and chime in here. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> These are your notes, yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> this is the general fund designations. That's just our, our uh, board policy at the 15% level, which we are not there. Just to remind the board that we're not at our 15% level. Okay, and this is... Uh, takes into consideration what the 30 to 30 bill. Yeah, that's the that Todd Road Jail expansion. Just these are these are these are long-term issues that we have to be cognizant of as we. But uh, the 30, approach our, 30 to 35 represents what? That's the debt service and the operational cost under okay. different and basically scenario. Two. Okay, so that's the one that kicks in around 2011. That's going to really jump things up, uh, and then we have the natural you know pressures of increase in annual costs. Uh, we have the Ventura County Medical Center seismic retrofit issue that uh, does not doesn't have to be solved before 2013, but that's creeping up on you. Uh, the state uh, may change that date again. They've been pushing it out uh, because no one's yet figured out how they're going to meet that law uh, financially. And then you have things like unfunded liabilities. Uh, fortunately, ours are minimal in the uh, the OPEB, that's other post-employment benefits. That's where you've been reading about this trillion dollars nationwide. Uh, that's bright spot in our budget. We didn't do that. But we do have, you know, issues of litigation uh, and deferred maintenance that are out there that also require us to pay close attention for a long-term uh, approach. You can throw in an East County annex to that, too. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, that gets us to the capital. Idea. Do we have those? Uh, Oh, okay. On the 12th, we will. Okay, I guess that's it for today. But the, the issue of the uh, East County Annex, what we are doing is we're preparing some uh, uh, graphics that will display uh, what it means if you address those top priorities uh, over the next, you know, five to eight years in terms of uh, capital investment and what it'll take to service that debt. Uh, we have a good line of credit. That is, we can easily afford to take on that kind of debt and be within the <clears throat> what the financial community thinks is a is a prudent uh, indebtedness, but the uh, difficulty is is while we have a, a platinum credit card, <laughs> we don't have an income necessarily to 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 max that card out. So uh, there'll be some choices that you'll need to make, and we're going to try to display that in a way that everybody can maybe get a get an understanding and a handle on it. So. That's my morning lecture. Thank you. Good job. Uh, Supervisor Boyce, then Supervisor Bennett. The, the hospital retrofit, I know that, like I said, we've seen that being pushed off. If an earthquake happens or something, I'm sure that's going to be pulled right back up to the forefront. So it sounds like we have $35 million, 30 35 what Paul had put on that, and then a few years later we're going to have that same. Because how big is that retrofit? Have we had estimates on what that would be? Well, there's, the numbers are uh, pretty pretty large. They're you know 200 plus million. But in the case of well, that's not for retrofit specifically, but either retrofit or, or replacement of the facility. But the the positive thing on the side of uh, of healthcare, if one can find positive signs, one is that it would be a replacement facility, so you don't have the operating cost increase. In fact, you may have some economies when you come up with a modern facility, whereas in the case when you expand jails, you're actually expanding the demand for operating, you know, the staffing, uh, which is all new. So your, your main uh, concern then has to be how do you finance and uh, serve the debt on it. And again, there's some positive things in the healthcare area. You have some offset for whatever it turns out to be because it's an enterprise revenue producer, plus there are subventions from the state and federal government that are available. So it's not a net number, but it's still going to eat into that uh, debt service that you're going to have to be providing, what I call the affordability factor. Right. We got the credit, we just don't have the uh, ability to afford everything. So uh, in two weeks, we'll, uh, is it two weeks or three? When we uh, June 12th, uh, we'll lay all that out and we'll include these other projects like East Valley uh, Civic Center possibly, uh, the uh, Juvenile Justice uh, Support Office building uh, that is, uh, we're currently 
renting or living in the courthouse with a prior agreement with the state, but that's supposed to eventually sunset and we're supposed to have our own building out there. So you have a number of facilities that have to be plugged in along with the jail. So that's all going to be kind of put into some sort of perspective for you on the whatever, June 12th. Great. Appreciate it. Mr. President? I just want to ask Mr. Dorsey if you would send me the PowerPoint with this presentation here. Thanks. Electronically. Great. Well, is that an end of presentation? I don't think we have any more comments or questions. I appreciate it. We'll hear another one in a couple of weeks, no doubt. Thank you. I believe that concludes our agenda, our regular agenda, other than what we have left, which is our closed session items. Is that correct? Oh, while we're at it, we can receive and file a report we just heard. A motion and a second. No objection. That passes. Mr. Claybaum, do you anticipate an announcement from our closed session? No, I do not. Okay. Well, then we'll go ahead and adjourn from closed session and be back in June. Thank you.